Managing Director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner, joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, Tony D joins us. And we talk about a number of different things. Sometimes uh, he throws some money expertise at us, tax expertise at us. He always finds an interesting story. And uh, today we're talking about uh, Chick-fil-A, Tony? Yeah, and, uh, you know, hello, everybody. And uh, I'll tell you, Lee, this is one of those things that I don't know whether to laugh, cry, scream, or throw up or do something worse. And um, I know we talk about a lot of financial concepts and things on this show and managing money, but this is really something that speaks to my heart as a business person and the concept I really don't like. Um, Chick-fil-A, uh, for those of you who may not know, is a uh, fast food restaurant uh, founded by a uh, person, a gentleman by the name of True Cathy. And Mr. Cathy, um, in, his, in his business, he espoused, uh, what he believed were Christian virtues, and one of the things was never work on a Sunday, keep the Sabbath. Uh, and so with that, uh, this was the, the type of thing that he did. Now, there was a sorority on uh, Quinnipiac uh, University in Hampton, Connecticut, that hired a Chick-fil-A truck to raise funds for domestic violence. And, you know, harmless enough thing to do. These are franchises, people with limited money could go and uh, purchase a franchise and uh, sell chicken sandwiches. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a lot better than crying about what you don't have. Um, a journalism professor at Quinnipiac University, her name is Margarita Diaz, uh, tweeted, and I'm going to read her tweet verbatim. Why does Quinnipiac U continue to welcome Chick-fil-A to campus? The company's ownership has zealously embraced a homophobic stance. We can do better. Uh, other comments that she made, uh, and I uh, actually uh, sort of along the same way, as an educational institution, Quinnipiac has a responsibility to model its values to students and other members of the community by welcoming Chick-fil-A, uh, which is open about its anti-LGBTQ mission. Um, they should not be a part of our community. And I guess what I'm saying, Lee, is, you know, you can believe what you want. You can believe whatever you want. That's entirely up to you. But when we start to control environments and we start to train young people by saying, if something is offensive out there, it needs to be removed, what kind of a world are we building? What kind of young people will I be hiring, you know, to succeed me in things into the future? I mean, this is really a terrible slippery slope. Now, the other thing is the official position of the university is rather than saying, no, we want to train people for the sake of, you know, making them better to deal with things in a difficult world, oh, we're going to take a look at it and we're going to have discussions. And I'm thinking to myself, um, is, is this what we're doing? Yeah, any business, and I'm just going to uh, give you this one thought, any business who's operating legitimately, whatever it is that you do, you have the right to go out there and do what it is that you want to do. Now, there are businesses, national businesses, I will not deal with. There are investment banks where the people come to me, hey, you want to come here and do this and do that? And I'm like, sorry, you're wearing the uniform. I don't uh, buy what you're selling. I can vote economically with my feet. Right. I do not need an environment telling me what I can and cannot believe it. This is so destructive to any kind of business formation in this state, let alone this country, that I'm literally beside myself. Well, I'm glad you brought this up because this has a lot to do with some of the things we've been talking about for, you know, we always talk about this kind of thing because I think you're a thousand percent right People can people can have an impact with their pocketbook, and I would like to ask that university professor with that tweet: Is she okay with seeing Nike sneakers on campus? Is she okay with seeing iPhones? Because you know they got kids in these sweatshops over in you know the southern peninsula of uh, in Asia who are building these things for ten cents an hour, if if that. 
And, you know, is she upset about that? I mean, what what exactly is it that she's, you know, obviously we know it's it's an anti-gay thing or a gay thing that she wants to, to bring to, to light. But you can make a case for just about everything and have some kind of a negative slant to it. But free speech is free speech, and it's up to the person to make the decision. And I'm glad you brought that up because you're a thousand percent right on this. Well, and, and you know, and, and regardless of what you believe, okay, I'm full disclosure, I, I believe along the lines of what Mr. Kathy may believe. That's irrelevant for purposes of this discussion. What is relevant is that anytime someone attempts to control an environment right. by a particular belief, is doomed to failure in its mission. I, you know, maybe we had a few kids in the audience, but there was a minister years ago by the name of James Baker uh, who had a very controlled environment and amusement park where he said, I'm going to run this thing entirely, you know, the other way. And, you know, it crashed because Henry Ford and Fort Lantigan, the world is not designed to operate that way. We should be training kids to look at difficult situations and to make peace with opinions that are not their own rather than trying to legislate them out of existence. There should be all kinds of different things on, especially college campuses. Tony. Exactly. Right? I mean, of all places... There should be every opportunity to see every single side of life on a college campus, even the side of life that you don't like. So if you don't like it, then, OK, you can stand. You don't have to stand up to to silence it. But you can, like you said, you just not buy the product or do whatever it is that makes you feel a little bit better. But silencing this kind of thing is not the way to go. No. And, and I mean, it's like uh, there is a car company whom I, I am very angrily opposed to ever since 2008, uh, for a number of reasons, and I could tell you all about them. But if I were to go to my community and stand out with a sign saying, this car company does not reflect my values, I would rightfully be dismissed as a nut. As a small business person, one who understands the difficulties doing it, like, man, just give me four at-bats. Give me four at-bats, and if I get on base, I deserve to play. Let's not regulate who is going to be providing good services to us by reason of what they believe. But it's a personal belief. Yeah. And I mean, there are no Jewish people who won't buy Mercedes Benzes, and I don't blame them. Right. So, I mean, it's, it is what it is, but it, they're not trying to shut the company down because it's, you know, it is, it, again, it's it's common sense. Yeah, and, and I'll leave you with this. Daniel Coit in uh, 1876, when he founded Johns Hopkins University, why do we have universities? It's a means for less misery among the poor, less ignorance in schools, less bigotry in the temples, less suffering in the hospital, less fraud in business, less folly in politics. The word university means universal, the adoption and the recognition of all systems and beliefs. Tony, great stuff today. Thank you. Thank you, pal. I'll talk to you down down the road for sure. Uh, Tony D., uh, again, good guy, good stuff. And uh, as always, we enjoy his conversation. We'll take a quick break. Bob was-